we're going to have a real life example of something that some of you may familiar, be familiar with. How many know of the Let's Make a Deal program on television? How many of you remember television? <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. Okay, Let's Make a Deal was this sort of thing where you'd get up and you'd try to guess the price of things and you would value what you, your own probability of whether your price guess was right. Uh, at the end, they would play this game where uh, you'd try to pick something behind three doors and we need someone to play for us here. Let's see. How about you in the red shirt? Come on up. Come on up. All right, so here we're going to play the Monty Hall game. In this game, you're going to have to pick one of three doors, and behind one door is a car, okay? You're not actually going to win the car. <laughs> All right, let's just say that. Lauren, pick a door for us, won't you? Door three. Lauren picks door three. <laughs> All right. Lauren picked door three. We've eliminated one door, so Lauren is probably feeling pretty good. The car wasn't behind door number two. How are you feeling, Lauren? Feeling good. That's how you feel good? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you majoring in at NYU, by the way? Social work. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so what was the probability that you could win the car the first time around? Okay. What was the One out of three. One out of three, right. So what has Monty Hall done now, Len? He's, uh, he's, what Monty Hall did he's, was he, he's, he's he said, you picked door number three, so I'm going to open a door, one of the other doors, to show you what's behind it. And that's what that was, okay? Right. Yeah. So, and so now you're, you're asked, did you ask already? Or I haven't asked, I haven't okay. asked already. Do you want to so, ask? So something? you have the chance, Lauren, <laughs> to stay with door number three yes. or to pick door number one. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna stay with three. You're gonna stay with three? Why are you gonna stay with three? You guys three? know too much. Oh, come on. Why are you gonna stay with three? Lauren, why are you staying with three? Um, it's my favorite number. It's my favorite number? <laughs> yeah, so you're not in the sciences. You're <laughs> majoring in social work. Okay, all right, great. Let's see what's behind door number three. Oh, you lose, Lauren. You lose a car. Sorry. There's a parting gift for you. It's a Maserati parked outside the front. Of the <laughs> Let's hear it for Lauren. All right. This is actually a classic problem, Len, called the Monty Hall problem. All right? In probability. Explain it. Lay it out for us. And why did so many people in the audience boo when Lauren, or not boo, but encourage Lauren to change her pick, do you think? Because, okay, uh, if, you, if you're a virgin to the Monty Hall problem, you probably think, why would it matter if I change or I don't change? Because the chances that I pick the right uh, curtain are one out of three either way, right? right? right. But right. if you've heard of the Monty Hall problem, you know that, that it's better to switch. Your chances are doubled if you switch. So why don't we illustrate How why that, that happens? How that be true? How are the chances double if you switch? There, oh, look at that. We've, we've got it. To pick, there are two possibilities. One is that you will pick the curtain with the car. Right. Call that the lucky guess scenario. You pick the curtain with the car. And the other is that you picked one of the booby prizes, or right. the, I guess, zonk prizes. Right. And, and so that's either one of the other curtains. Now, the chances that you, uh, were, that you were correct and you picked the car were one out of three, obviously, as you can see from this. Right. From this. And the chances that you picked uh, a booby prize are two out of three. Right. Okay? Got it. So, Suppose you're in the, what we call the lucky guess scenario, and you, picked, uh, and you picked the car to begin with. Of course, right. you, you, don't, you don't know that. Uh, then Monty Hall comes up and says, OK, you picked number one, curtain number one, and I'm going to open one of the other curtains, and let's see what's there. And then Monty just picks one or the other at random, because they're both essentially identical, and he'll, he'll open one or the other. So that doesn't change anything. It doesn't, it's still everything that's going on is random. And now what's left is you've, you've picked the car, and the other curtain is not the car. So if you switch at this point, you lose. And if you stay, you win. So it's better to stay in this case, correct? OK. Now, let's look at the other scenario, which we call the, uh, uh, or at least in the drunkards, my book, I called it the, the bad guess scenario. So that's the uh, good guess scenario. That, that's the bad guess scenario. All right, so, OK, we're moving on to the bad moving guess scenario. Moving on to the bad guess scenario. Yeah, so, yeah. so you. You, you picked one of the uh, Zonk doors to start with. Right. Okay, now, now let's see what happens next. Now Monty comes and says, okay, you picked curtain two or you picked curtain three. 
And I'm going to open one of the other curtains to let's see what's behind uh, that curtain. But now what Monty is doing is not random at all. Monty is avoiding opening the, the, the curtain with the car because to open the curtain with the car would end the game and that would be a dud. Right. So Monty does not open that. So it's no longer a random process. Monty chooses to open uh, the, the curtain with the booby prize that you did not pick. So he's injecting new information into the system. Uh -huh. okay? And in this case, what happens? Okay, you've chosen a, a booby prize. He's opened the other prize, the other booby prize. And now if you switch, you win. And if you stay, you lose. So the, the optimal strategy is different depending on what, how you started. But the chances that you're in the bad guess scenario are two out of three. They're twice as great as the chances that you're in the lucky guess scenario uh, that's, uh, where, where it's better to stay. So if, if you switch, you'll win twice as often as if you stay. And that's why it's good to switch. And apparently, most of you all know that, right? Okay, so... So that's why Lauren should have switched. That's why she should have switched. All right. But so, sometimes we think we have a hunch and we're just going to stick with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but, and partly that's what goes wrong in our kind of mythology about probabilities is in that we hear the zonk and we feel like we're lucky and we're on something of a hot streak and we don't calculate objectively what's going on in the system. And so we stay with our guess even though it's against our interests. Yeah, and, and you know what, if, and, and suppose that she had picked that and she had been right, then she'd walk away going, see, I was right. And see, that's the thing about probability. It's only true in the long run, right? In any particular case, you could be better off to switch or not to switch. And so you can't say that one instance of this proves anything.